today we are discussing different theories of language development the development of language is part of the development of personality for words are the natural means of expressing thoughts and establishing understanding between people these are the famous words of maria montessori let us come to the learning theory of language development this theory of learning proposed by b f skinner the learning perspective perspectives argues that children imitate what they are seeing especially the elders children learn from punishment and re reinforcement skinner argued that adults people shape and speech of children by reinforcing the babbling of infants that sound most like words behaviorism we will look at the history of behaviorism we will ask what are the main tenets of behaviorism, we will look at criticism of behaviorism, and then give some overview at the end. So first, the history. For the first half of the 20th century, the behaviorist view of language development was generally accepted. It was first proposed by John Watson in 1913, but the best known proponent was B.F. Skinner. His book, Verbal Behavior, published in 1957, was a written account for human language learning. Soon after, Skinner's book was soon after Skinner's book was highly criticized by Noam Chomsky, who was able to show that language was too complex to be learned through Skinner's behaviorist model. By the 1970s, behaviorism gave way to cognitive science. Before we get to that, let's take a look at the main tenets of behaviorism. So, what is behaviorism? Behaviorism is the theory that all behaviors are acquired through interaction with the environment. The uh, examples of interactions are imitation, reinforcement, practice, and habit formation. Let's consider a parent speaking to their child. The parent displays the desired behavior by saying, Mama, Mama. The baby then tries to mimic the sounds by repeating, Ma. The parent then hugs or kisses, snuggles or praises the baby, thus reinforcing the behavior of saying ma. Because this behavior of saying ma helps the baby to get its basic needs met, the baby is likely to practice this behavior over and over until it is a habit. This habit then leads to the mastery of mama, for which the baby receives more praise. Imagine this happening over and over for every word, part of speech, phrase, or sentence of a language. This process is called operant conditioning. When learners are encouraged or positively rewarded for showing a desired behavior, this results in the continuation of said behavior. If learners are discouraged or punished for showing an undesired behavior, this results in the learner not repeating the behavior. Behaviorism holds that language is learned solely through operant conditioning, and in this way the whole house of language is built, each word, phrase or sentence acting as one brick in the foundation. A daunting task indeed. So daunting that some would say it's impossible. Noam Chomsky bring, brings, the end to, brings on the end to behaviorism by stating that language is too complex and novel to be learned through mimicry alone. He states that there must be some universal grammar that is built into the brain this universal grammar structures the way someone learns their first or second language. The underlying structures for language, language acquisition are innate. Another critique of behaviorism comes by critiquing the contrastive analysis hypothesis. The contrastive analysis hypothesis supports the theory of behaviorism and holds that errors in someone learning a second language should be based on it, the differences between that second language and the first their mother language or their first language and this is wrong instead second language learners do not make many errors that would be predicted given their first language and their actual errors tend to follow the same path of development as those as those of a child learning their first language this suggests also that there are underlying frameworks in the brain for language learning whether a person is learning their first language, their second, or their third, they are, they are likely to undergo a similar path of development. This, critici this criticism proved to be the beginning of the end of, a wide, of the widespread acceptance of behaviorist views. 
and by the 1970s, behaviorism gave way to cognitive science. Behaviorists based their second language acquisition theories on the notion of positive reinforcement. According to behaviorists, second languages were developed through mimicry and memorization. According to this perspective, when a child was rewarded in some way for their language response, they would increase their responses and decrease responses that were negatively responded to or not responded to at all. Also, because language development was tied to the development of habits, this theory complemented the contrastive analysis hypothesis that theorized that there would be a collaboration between the patterns of speech in the child's first language and the rate in which they learned aspects of the second language basically saying that the first language would interfere with learning the second language. Chomsky comes along and says that language development proceeds, on predict, pre, proceeds upon predictable paths across the population, whether they're learning the first or second language. Also, there are universal forms found in all languages, such as prepositions. Even though these forms may not be used in the same order in different languages, they are still universally present. Whereas one language might say the dog is in the cage, another might say the dog is in the cage, the dog, the cage in. Lastly, the errors made by second language learners are not necessarily related to what they know in their first language. Instead, the path of development in their second language more closely relates to the path of development in their first language. Again, suggesting there's uh, which suggests that when learning a second language, the underlying universal grammar supersedes any habits for, formed in the mother language. It is for these reasons that the assumptions of behaviorism have given way to the innatist perspective. Currently, the cogn cognitive or developmental perspective of language development is preferred. Thank you for your time. Next theory is known as nativist theory of learning. It is proposed by Noam Chomsky, the father of linguistics. The nativist perspectives argues that all humans are biologically programmed to gain knowledge. The main theorist associated with this perspective is Noam Chomsky. Chomsky proposed that all humans have a language acquisition device. The lad, lad or language acquisition device contains knowledge of grammatical rules common to all languages. It also allows children to understand the rules of whatever language they are listening to. Chomsky also developed the concepts of transformational grammar, surface structure and deep structure. Next theory is known as interactionist theory. It is proposed by uh, Le Vygotsky. Interactionists argue that language development is both biological and social and language learning is influenced by the desire of children to communicate with others. According to them, children are born with a powerful brain that matures slowly and predisposes them to acquire new understandings that they are motivated to share with others. Interactionists focus on Vygotsky's model of collaborative learning. It brings the idea that conversation with other older people can help children both cognitively and linguistically develop. Another well-known theory is known as universal grammar theory. Hello, nice to see you. In the mid 20th century, the American linguist Noam Chomsky proposed a theory that our brains are hardwired with a mental template for learning grammar and that we rely on this innate grammar module to acquire language. His theory of universal grammar would endeavor to define a set of rules applicable to all languages, essentially exposing a hidden unity that underlies the vast surface diversity of the 7,000 languages in the world. Universal grammar was a radical break from the more informal approaches prevalent at the time. Traditional approaches relied too much 
on the intelligence of the speaker and failed to account for a number of linguistic phenomena. Structuralist approaches had too limited a scope, focused too much on morphemes and phonemes, and didn't account for the intelligence of the speaker. In his book, Aspects of the Theory of Syntax, Chomsky drew attention to all the complexities involved in becoming a competent speaker of a language. His first version of the theory of universal grammar incorporated two emerging trends in Western intellectual life. The idea is that language had both a computational structure and was rooted in human biology. He posited that the language we use to communicate in everyday life behaves in the same manner as mathematically based computer languages. Simultaneously, he suggested that universal grammar was an innate component of the human mind with deep biological underpinnings. Universal grammar of the 1960s was initially based on the underlying structure of the languages spoken by those linguists who were developing the theory. That meant, for the most part, European languages. The universal grammar program operated on chunks of language, such as noun and verb phrases, and sought to define rules that could be applied to or transform those phrases. However, exceptions that did not align with the established schema began to emerge, challenging this early idea of a universal grammar. Ergative languages such as Basque and Urdu, for example, use sentence subjects in a way that is unlike that in many European languages. Additionally, native Australian languages such as Walpiri scatter noun and verb phrases throughout the sentence. These outliers were difficult to reconcile with the universal grammar approach and led to a wholesale revision of the theory in the 1980s. Rather than a single universal grammar for all the world's languages, the new version of the theory set to identify universal principles, such as any structure X must have the property Y, plus parameters that governed the structure of languages. These principles manifested themselves differently in each language and interacted with culture to produce today's parametric variations. Let us look at a non-linguistic example to illustrate this principles and parameters approach. A principle that could be found in our world is that all countries have roads that can be driven on. The question is, on which side? So here we have a parameter that can be associated with each country. Plus right for right-hand traffic and minus right for left-hand traffic. Here is a linguistic principle. Standard declarative sentences normally have an overt subject even if the subject is a pronoun. This is true for English and German, where sentences without the pronominal subject are ungrammatical. Languages such as Italian or Spanish, by contrast, can form fully grammatical sentences without the need for separate subjects. This parameter has become known as the prodrop parameter, some people also call it null subject parameter. It is set minus for English and German, where the pronoun cannot be dropped, and plus for Italian and Spanish. The idea is, as soon as children encounter few sentences of this type, this prodrop parameter would be set, and the children would know whether they could drop the subject in these sentences or not. The most recent revision of universal grammar came in 2002 when Chomsky and his colleagues published a paper in science. 
where they described a universal grammar that included only one feature called computational recursion or merge. This new shift in the paradigm permitted a limited number of words and rules to be combined to make an unlimited number of sentences. He also proposed that this recursive ability that may have arisen from a single genetic mutation between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago is what sets language apart from other types of cognitive processes such as categorization and relational perception. However, as with the 1960 version of this theory, there is a counterexample the Amazonian language Pidaha. This language does not exhibit recursive structures. Defenders of universal grammar make the analogy that the universal parameters and principles are like our senses of taste. While culture and geography may produce variations in worldly cuisines, we are all nevertheless born with a basic set of tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and so on. Just because a culture lacks salt to season food does not mean that the members of that culture lack the ability to taste salt. Likewise, they would say, just because a language lacks recursive structures, this does not mean that the speakers of that language lack the potential for recursion. This line of thinking makes universal grammar difficult to test in practice and contributes to the overall empirical inadequacies of the theory. Many researchers are becoming increasingly dissatisfied with a completely formal language approach such as universal grammar. With more and more evidence rebutting Chomsky's theory, a paradigm shift may be underway. This paradigm shift will be discussed in a second video on universal grammar. Until then, have a nice time and thanks for your attention. Universal grammar theory is proposed by Avaram Noam Chomsky. He is an American linguist, philosopher, cognitive scientist, historian, social critic and political activist. Sometimes described as the father of modern linguistics. Chomsky is also a major figure in analytic philosophy and one of the founders of field of cognitive science. From 1951 to 55, he was appointed to Harvard University's Society of Fellows where he developed the theory of transformational grammar for which he was awarded his doctorate in 1955. That year, he began teaching at MIT in 1957 Emerging as a significant figure in the field of linguistics for his landmark work Syntactic Structures which remodeled the scientific study of language while from 1952 to 59 he was a National Science Foundation Fellow at the Institute for Advanced Study. He is credited as the creator or co-creator of the Universal Grammar Theory the generative grammar theory, the Chomsky hierarchy and the minimalist program. Now let us hear about universal grammar theory. The basic postulate of universal grammar theory that set a certain structural roles are innate to humans independent of sensory experience with more linguistic stimuli received in the course of psychological development children then adopt specific syntactic rules that conform to universal grammar. It is sometimes known as mental grammar and stands contrasted with other grammars. The advocates of this theory emphasize and partially rely on the poverty of the stimulus argument and the existence of some universal properties of natural human languages. The theory of universal grammar proposes that if human beings are brought up under normal conditions, then they will always develop language with certain properties. The theory proposes that there is an innate genetically determined language faculty that knows these rules, 
making it easier and faster for children to learn to speak than it otherwise would be. American born linguistic Noam Chomsky believes that we are born with a predisposition to learn language. The essence of his theory is language acquisition state the human beings are prewired to learn language and in fact are born with the basic rules for language intact. Prior to Chomsky, it is wi widely agreed that language acquisition was a mostly learned process. For instance, many believed that language skills were developed solely through watching and learning our parents and other people in our environment. Chomsky's notion that brain is prewired for language was quite a contrast to the accepted beliefs of the time. Then we can see language, uh, Chomsky's views on language acquisition. Chomsky proposed some ideas that were new ways of thinking about language, the theory of universal grammar, the idea that language is innate and notion that language acquisition occurs during critical development stages. As we are concluding, we can revisit all these three theories once again. The nativist perspectives argues that humans are biologically programmed to gain knowledge. Interactionists argue that language development is both biological and social and language learning is influenced by the desire of children to communicate with others. The universal theory of grammar proposes that there is an innate genetically determined language faculty that knows these rules making it easier and faster for children to learn to speak than it otherwise would be. After going through all these theories we can see that all the theories of language development agree that children acquire language through interplay of biology and environmental factors.